Hey everyone, it's Christian here and I am in Osprey, Florida where I stay some of the time and uh, I'm here at Bentley's Hotel and Resort which is uh, it has an interesting past. It used to be a Ramada Inn then it was called the Osprey Inn. It might have been called something else in the, in the middle there. It might have moved back to something and then a uh, place uh, bought it and renovated it and it's kind of a little higher end uh, kind of Tiki meets, meets, meets modern. It's called yeah. It's called Bentley's. I, they have uh, little, some conventions here. They have little poker tournaments here. So uh, it's kind of a neat little place. There's a tiki bar in the back. It's kind of like a new age modern look now. So anyway, wait for the truck to go by. Um, so the palm here I'm reviewing is a palm that I probably should have reviewed a, a while back, and that's uh, Phoenix Reclinata or the Senegal Date Palm. Now this palm is. This is in the date palm family. It's a phoenix, and it is native to West Africa, you know, uh, specifically uh, Senegal. But it, it grows throughout Western Africa, and it has naturalized in many areas because of its ability to hybridize and seed profusely in most of its environments. And it does uh, adapt well to many different environments. It does well in Mediterranean environments. It does well in tropical environments. It does well in subtropical environments, humid or dry. So um, the one thing about this palm that is very particular I should say is that it is a clumper and it clumps in many different ways this one actually has separate trunks coming out of the ground with the suckers now they may have buried this uh, palm the the base uh, much more so than they do others most of the time you will see a base that is like almost like a mound but, uh, and with trunks coming out of the mound but this is actually coming out of the ground the separate trunks and this is one plant. It should be one plant. It might be two, but they, they put multiple seeds in these. Sorry about the road noise and the wind. I'm trying to talk over it. Uh, you can see there's suckers coming out there. There's probably at least 15 of them or so. Um, even little tiny guys over there. <clears throat> and there's a little anole. I believe it's a black anole. Anole. I, I don't know. I'm not good with uh, reptiles, so someone who might be could uh, chime in there. But you can see the crowns here are uh, they're nice and full. And uh, the leaves are a little bit, they're going to they're gonna feel a little bit stiffer than, say, a pygmy date, a phoenix robolini, but not as stiff. They look like uh, canariensis from the standpoint, but they're not as, nearly as stiff. Um, this is a, is a great palm to make a, uh, as, as a good uh, uh, centerpiece. But the downside of this palm is that it does suffer from many of the same problems that, uh, that phoenix canariensis does. Canary Island date, and that's it, ha, it, it is so susceptible to Ganoderma. I see so many of these where one crown dies, and then you get two or three crowns, and the whole thing is falling down. And next thing you know, you have no more palm. So, uh, beware if you decide to plant one of these. The other problem with this palm is that it also has incredible thorns, uh, arm petioles, I should say. So, if you look up there and you see those, if you look at that, they're probably about two to three inches long and they are as painful as they look if you get stabbed by one of those expect to have and an, say in the in your hand it, it'll be inflamed for about a week you're going to want to put some anti-inflammatory uh, cream on it uh, it's going to be quite painful these are very expensive to trim i don't i couldn't tell you offhand but it's usually like 15 dollars a head to trim maybe maybe like 75 to 125 depending on how many crowns there are in a, a single clump so <clears throat> keep that in mind if you plant one of these. Also, some of the, this is actually a very tidy, easy to walk near Reclinata. There are some that are very beefy. You can't walk around them or near them. And the, there's some crowns that are very low to the ground. And you, they're, they're actually big, good hedges. It really depends. I mean, the problem is this plant is hybridized so much from its natural state. It's really hard to say wh which ones are true and which ones are not true, uh, you know, pure species. So I'm going to actually... Uh, teleport over to another clumping of this palm but in po probably a hybrid form so let's hold on just a second here okay so we're over here now and I saw this from afar and I thought oh this is a hybrid and it's actually not it's actually a double canary thing going on where someone probably had two in a pot and just put them in the ground and then they dug them up and said hey we'll sell it like this and this is not uncommon in Florida whatsoever uh, you can <laughs> you can get a, a phoenix a, or a day palm in any shape or size you want as long as someone has hybridized it properly now there are very there are a lot of hybrids in the date 
family that have kind of come up as a as a type in the nursery industry. And one is a the uh, Reclinata Robolini hybrid. There's the Reclinata Canariensis hybrid. So it's a Canary Island date palm hybridized with a uh, <clears throat> with a uh, Reclinata with a, a Senegal date palm. Now th that's what I when I first when I drove by here. That's what I thought this was. So uh, I was wrong, but you know it was first glance and it was my bad. But you will find that there's there are hybrids and they're they'll have a beefier trunk. They'll be clumping. It's almost like a clumping Canary Island date look with the uh, with, with with the um, the fatness. Yeah, and you just kind of have a little bit. It, they 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 are very desirable as far as they look very nice. They have a thick trunk and they they don't look as dainty. They have this robustness about it that is very desirable. So here, speaking of hybrids, this is a palm that you know appears to be a date and could possibly be a hybrid with Sylvestris because of the leaflets. They're just not typical of Canariensis. They have uh, their the way that their leaves are coming out off of the rachis. Uh, is in multiple dimensions where the Canary Island date comes just in one plane, even if it has, it sometimes is bipinnate or multipinnate, but it doesn't do it in such a fashion where the leaflets kind of like recurve on each other. I don't know if you guys can see that through the sun, but this could likely be a Canariensis hybridized with Sylvestris. Uh, it's really too robust to be Sylvestris, although it's possible, and uh, it's you just this is kind of a vlog where uh, you, you never know what you're going to get there. This this one kind of looks a lot more like just Sylvestris in general, and it's probably just a regular big robust Sylvestris. So, you know, these could be just a, a Sylvestris type, but they tend to not get trunks that thick, or the date will get a trunk that thick. So, um, trying to find other uh, Phoenix types here on the property, but uh, otherwise, this place is actually pretty neat. Uh, if you're in if you're in the Sarasota, Venice area, this is actually a pretty nice place to stay. It's got a real modern look inside. I'm not getting paid to, to say any of this, so I just from my own experience. So I uh, and then we have a they have a lot of foxtails in various stages of uh, health and or decline. But um, that's a different vlog altogether. So anyway, walking back here towards my car, I just wanted to talk a little bit. Um, I'm going to be in on Tuesday, which is two days from now, I'm heading out to Louisiana to do some uh, plant work. And then I'm also going to Mississippi and then I'm heading back in a big truck with a trailer in tow and I'm going to Miami. So hopefully I can do some vlogs along the way, finding some cool uh, palms while I'm up in the mid Gulf Coast area. And uh, so here's, this is where the other uh, the original reclinata was that I did vlog for you guys. And so, <clears throat> see this is kind of a vlog where sometimes it's hard to find a pure species of, of phoenix because it is, uh, they hybridize so easily because they need a male and a female and they, they do in, inter, interchange uh, so much or interhybridize, or just hybridize in general I should say, it's not interhybridizing. So, I will leave everyone there. I, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions about Phoenix in general, leave it down below. And I will talk to you guys soon.